What's up guys? On today's video, we're going to be adjusting the base idle on the 1987 C10. Uh, currently it hot idles at about 500, but it'll, it'll stall out sometimes when I drop it into gear or if I'm at a stoplight with the AC running, the RPMs will just get too low and uh, it'll cut out on me. So we're going to bump that up to about 700, 750 at hot idle and hopefully that'll solve the issues we've been having. Uh, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and click the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. Turn on your notifications so you never miss a video. Okay guys, what I like to do uh, right before I adjust the base idle is just bring the truck to operating temperature. We're about 160, 170 right now, so we're getting close. The idle is finally settled in right at about 500. You can kind of see it down there, a little blurry. But the idle settled in about 500. I'll give you an example of what happens when I put it in gear, how much the RPMs drop. So as you can see, they drop to about 300 kick the AC on they drop even more so imagine rolling up to a stoplight turning about 200 rpms the whole truck's shaking so bad it almost stalls out so we're going to adjust the idle a little bit bump that up to about 700 750 and hopefully solve our issue now that the truck is up to operating temperature we're going to take our obd1 connector which is just a piece of wire stripped of both ends you can actually pay for a code reader an obd1 code reader but I mean, they're expensive and they do the exact same thing. So we're going to jump the A and B terminals, which are the top two right on the OBD-1. I'll put a picture up on the screen now to show you which ones I'm talking about. Once you have them jumped with the key off, you jump it with the key off, then we will turn the key on Now's a good time to set a timer for 30 seconds. So the IAC can close completely. Once it is closed, we will unplug the IAC, start the truck, and then begin to adjust the base idle. Once you have waited 30 seconds, you can go ahead and unplug the idle air control valve, which I have a TBI up here, make it a little easier to show you. So this will be facing you as you're looking in the engine bay. So it will be on the passenger side towards the rear of the throttle body. I think that is an inch and a quarter, if I'm not mistaken, to remove that. But you're not removing it, you're just unplugging it. So you'll just unplug the weather pack connector and should be good to go. And the screw you will need is behind this plug. Not all of them are plugged, but mine was. So you'll just, I took a drill bit, drilled it out and it should be a T25 to adjust it. We will turn it clockwise, I think, to advance the idle, and hopefully we can get her settled in at about 750. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the idle air control valve and start the pickup. The pickup may be a little hard to start with the idle air control valve completely closed. So uh, just keep give it a little gas if you have to to get her started. Do you see it's running but it is barely idling so we're gonna go ahead and bump that up to about 750 700 and hopefully solve our issue okay guys I plugged the IAC back in I disconnected the battery for 30 seconds to reset any of the codes that could have been stored in the ECM from having it unplugged as you can see we're in gear we're actually in first and we're hovering around 450, 500. So that's helped out tremendously. Uh, I took it for about a 30 minute test drive with the AC on. Anytime I pull up to a stop sign, it would idle about 500, 550. So there's not too much worry about it stalling out on me anymore. If I can get it to focus, you can see we're hanging out right about 750, somewhere around there. But so I think we solved our issue of hopefully having it stall out on us when we go into reverse or drive or just pull up to a stop sign with the AC on.
Better kill the headlights so I don't kill the battery. But it's real simple to uh, adjust the base idle on these TBIs as long as you follow a certain step, which is all pretty simple. I mean, uh, using that wire for your uh, OBD-1 saves you a lot of money versus buying the actual code reader that they sell you that does the identical thing. So that was the video for the day. If you liked the video, like, comment, subscribe, and we're going to catch you on the next one, guys. Thank you.